Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. They usually reserve the place for the oldest and the ugliest to speak first. Go ahead. I don't have a prepared statement about George Guy. Oh, yeah, Buddy Guy, excuse me. Buddy Guy has been a friend for a long, long time. He's been inspiration for many, many, many people, including myself. I never was as handsome as he is. And I think Lucille liked him better. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to say to have known him as many years as, if I ha as I have, I should say. I don't want to say how long because I hope I hope to get married again one day and <laughs> ladies should know how old I really is then I won't make it but I've known him for a long time when I first met Buddy Guy I met him with what I call the godfather of the blues and you blues lovers should remember the great muddy waters But I'll say this and then I'll move over for the handsome one. Um, when it comes to being a great person, Buddy Guy is that. When it comes to be a great guitarist, Buddy Guy is that. He's a good friend and he's been a friend to most of us. I didn't have a prepared statement, as I said, to read, but I think my friend here, and I like to say this where well, you can hear me. Um, the number one rock and roll guitarist today is my friend right behind me, the handsome one. And thank you. And he played blues better than me and most of the others. But um, I think that Buddy Guy is very close second to him. My friend. Rock and roll. You get me in a lot of trouble. You done? You done? Did he care? You got something to say? Good evening. It's a great honor and a privilege uh, to be able to induct this distinguished gentleman into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. A man who means so much to me personally and who as a musician has given so much to us all. It also provides me with the perfect opportunity to say thank you for all the inspiration he's given me over the years his style of playing and singing, and his love and concern for the welfare of the blues has been a great example for me and countless others who have the good fortune to share this road. My first experience of Buddy's power was when I brought a record called Folk Festival of the Blues, a little album, a live album recorded in Chicago in the 60s. And in the company of such great artists as Otis Spann, Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, and Sonny Boy Williamson, Buddy did far more than just hold his own. With the greatest respect to all those fabulous masters, in my humble opinion, he stole the show. Coming from the back of the field like a thoroughbred racehorse, he shone through that genius ensemble, taking no prisoners and letting everyone know that he, has, he was the new dangerous kid on the block. It is still one of the great albums, debut albums by any artist in any genre, and it started me on a relentless mission to find out who just, just who this man was and what else he had done. I gradually discovered a wealth of recordings, mostly on chess records and mostly singles like Stone Crazy, My Time After a While, and First Time I Met the Blues. Serious blues anthems with incredible productions, which would often feature in various members of the chess house band, great players like Little Walter, the Myers Brothers, and Willie Dixon. Aside from his own recordings, which became musical milestones for me, I also found him on countless other artist records, people like Otis Rush, Muddy Waters and Little Walter. And no matter how great the song or the performance, my ear would always find him out. He just stood out in the mix, simply by virtue of the originality and vitality of his playing. And beside the music, another point for me at that time was that he was a younger blues musician in a field totally dominated by much older guys. And on that level alone, I could identify with him completely, as well as admiring his skills. There he was, standing alike beside the masters of his craft, holding his own, 
and confidently pushing the blues into the 20th century. Buddy personified all that the modern blues man needed to be. His technique was and is unique, fueled by the Delta and the more recent urban contributions of Robert Lockwood and Muddy Waters. He combined these ingredients with the sophisticated phrasings of T-Bone Walker and B.B. King and blasted them all into his own personal vision of what the blues ought to be saying right now. And I remember in 65 when he first came to England and played at the Marquee Club and I was finally able to see him in person. In the flesh he was earth shattering. His style on every level was fantastic. Doing all the things we would later come to associate with Jimi Hendrix, playing with his teeth, his feet and behind his head, he brought the house crashing down. But beyond all that, it was his actual playing that got through to me. With only a drummer and a bass player behind him, he gave her a thundering performance, delivering the blues with finesse and passion in a way I had never heard before. And incidentally started me thinking that a trio was a pretty good lineup for a band. <laughs> all in all, everything about that night was deeply profound for me. The blues was clearly alive and well, and it looked good too for as well as being the real thing, musically, Buddy was a star. His suit, his hair, his moves, his sunburst strat, everything was sharp and perfect. He was for me what Elvis probably was for most other people. My course was set and he was my pilot. Since those early days, Buddy has become the hardcore reality of what the blues is supposed to sound and look like. Not, I think, through any calculated need on his part to be accepted, simply because that's the way it is and that's the way he is. Buddy has been solid in the heart of the blues for more than 50 years, touring, recording and spreading the word, and somewhere in that journey we became friends. Whenever I was in Chicago, I would drop by the club and play, or just hang out and shoot the breeze. Well, over the years we played many, many times together, but it seems like I always forget how powerful and soulful his thing is until he cranks it up yet again and then it all comes back to me and I go straight back to the Marquee Club my jaw drops and I become a helpless ecstatic teenager all over again for that and for keeping it true I thank you buddy guy and I welcome you to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame